On Thursday, the Chargers took on the Kansas City Chiefs in a game that they would sadly lose. Now, as many of you guys already know, I do a weekly video on the five things that we learned about the Chargers post their week. So this this week was week one, post week one, five things we learned. But in this video, and something I want to do each week, is do like a film recap. So what I did is I condensed the game down into all the major plays, whether that be touchdowns, flags, big play opportunities, as well as just kind of picking little plays here to show how certain players are doing very well in schemes, how they're reading plays, as well as just some plays and showing why they are or aren't working. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video right here. Um, if you guys enjoy this content, please hit me with a like and subscribe. It truly means the world to me. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into this. So first things first here. Let's kind of bring something up real quick, and it's the fact that we can't go through every single play when we're doing this film recap. Even with commercials cut out and every every bit of fluff you can and only showing just the plays, a game is still 40 minutes long. So we're definitely not going to have a video like that because I want to be able to stop, analyze plays, kind of cut through reasons why things are happening, and all that stuff. So what I did is I condensed 40 minutes worth of plays down into seven minutes the major place here and we're going to be going through each one of these so the very first one we have here is going to be a play very early on where herbert uses his eyes to really get joshua palmer open and for his penalty so as we kind of play this and it's not gonna look like this all the time but as it starts we see joshua palmer right up here hopefully you can see my cursor um, top of your screen if you can't see my cursor and the play begins, and we see everything's kind of breaking down. Middle of the field, we got Mike, we got Mike Williams covered. We got Gerald Everett down here in the flats in the bottom side of your screen. Middle field's all kind of covered, and we kind of see Kelly starting to make his way out. But we see Palmer on the top of your screen get a little bit open. But we see the cornerback is starting to make a break up, and as Herbert turns. He sees this cornerbacks right behind him, and we see this linebacker that's going to be covering Joshua Palmer start to kind of or guard Joshua Kelly, kind of cut in front of Palmer here. And what you'll see Herbert does is as he pump fakes right here, first attempt, pump fakes, brings it back, and then he uses his eyes looking at Palmer right here to bring the uh, cornerback more in and not be able to push up on your running back, and then he throws it too far forward for Joshua Palmer, which will force your cornerback, who is now behind him because his eyes, to have to kind of jump into him and causes the flag right there, which allows them to get the first down. So now on the next play here, um, you'll see this quite a bit. I have people circled, so you know what to watch. I believe this is the sack early on in the game where you have Drew Tranquil and Khalil Mack, who is on the right side of your screen here. And I just want to show how they do a great job at loading the middle. You have your two interior linemen right here, and you have Cleo Mack on the edge. And you also use Kenneth Murray as well as Drew Tranquil, almost as your linebacker edges who are going to blitz here. So as this play starts, right here we see the second we snap, he's already making a full break. So your Chiefs right tackle here has to make an immediate decision, number 77 right here. And as Drew Tranquil is going immediately in, we see the right guard, number 65, decide to go towards the interior D-line, which completely opens the middle right between the two for Drew Tranquil to shoot in. And because of that, you allow for the right tackle to make a decision, and he chooses to attempt to get Drew Tranquil now, he does fail in that, but what it also allows for you to do is you have Cleo Mack, who is over on the edge. I don't know if my video's flipped, but on the right side of your screen, he's on the edge here, and he's able to fully push up the field, and he's going to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes no matter what happens. But in this situation, your number 77 right tackle just can't get in front of Drew. Drew gets right past him, and you have Cleo Mack and Drew Tranquil fully pressured up, and Mahomes hasn't even noticed yet. And not only that, but on the left side of your screen, you also have Kenneth Murray coming all the way in. So this blitz package worked absolutely how you want it to, and it's working flawlessly. But as we see it continue, Drew Tranquil misses the tackle, but Kenneth Murray's able to, or not Kenneth Murray, 
Khalil Mack's able to finish the tackle. They both get half a sack, but that's just a really good play calling for a blitz, and that's kind of something that I'm really looking forward to because you don't have Joey Bosa out there in this play, and you're still able to get immense pressure and a sack on the quarterback just with your linebackers adding pressure at the line, which is just incredible to see. Now, um, pardon my Frank here, but this play is the cluster of passing everywhere. So as we're going to see here, we have your three wide receivers stacked up here at the top. You got one down here at the bottom and Austin Eckler in the backfield with Justin Herbert. So as it's snapped, he throws it on over here to DeAndre Carter, which, you know, it looks like a simple screen. This could work because you're able to go two for two and then DeAndre Carter just has to beat your linebacker who's right in the middle of the screen there. But instead, after DeAndre Carter gets it, and I'm not sure if this was like we're going to do this no matter what happens or if it was like DeAndre Carter you make a choice here but honestly I feel like if DeAndre Carter hugs the sideline on the top of the screen here he probably could have went easily to get a first down and potentially more the only worry here is going to be that safety over top as well as you're going to have the linebacker looks like 34 in the middle of your screen that is also going to be making his way over but instead they have DeAndre Carter throw it across the field to Austin Eckler, almost gets picked off by their D-line here. Austin Eckler is able to make an incredible move here, but you already have two guys right here. Your linemen are all the way upfield, no one to block because they are they just completely whiffed. If we can go back here, as we watch this occur, Cleo Mack comes over. We see Trey Pipkins loses his block right here, and the rest of the guys just kind of walk up expecting that everyone behind him is just going to give up. And, and to be fair, Austin Eckler is fast enough where he could normally beat them. But with how slow this play progressed, they just completely left Eckler out to dry. And it just didn't really work here. Now, next up, we have Mike Williams, who was absolutely incredible all game long. Got him circled up here. We're going to be watching him against the smaller defender we have. And we're just going to see one of his 50-50 balls. It's more like 80-20 for Mike but he draws in the penalty on this play, as we all know, because the defender doesn't completely turn and look around. But Mike just goes up and gets it, comes down to the two-yard line. And something I kind of want to show you is early on, we see this shorter matchup. But they do a good job at limiting it because as we kind of have this play action, we're able to pull up your linebackers, which completely clears the middle of the field. And as Joshua Palmer comes across here, now here's the thing. Their safety did kind of come up a little bit too far which took away from some of it but Joshua Palmer is able to force their safety to kind of cover him instead of Mike Williams and then it's just a 50-50 ball between Mike Williams and not only that but Joshua Palmer was open if if need be Mike Williams comes up with a great catch and the flag able to get it himself uh, right here the first uh, end zone attempt for the Chargers they try and attempt here the Chiefs just do an incredible job of getting in there with uh, Gay as well. Uh, next play, we have Xander Horvath's touchdown. And just similar to last week, you get a little bit of motion to kind of confuse the defense a little bit. They're probably expecting a run, especially with all of the running backs this team has. Hit a little play action right here. Everyone always forgets about the fullback, seems like. Even last year with Gabe Neighbors. You also have Gerald Everett right here that's going to cut out to the same direction. And what's that, what that is going to do is force your cornerback right in between these two to make a decision. Does he want to come down or does he want to go up? Now, the smarter decision here is probably to go get Gerald Everett because you're hoping your linebacker will go get uh, out on the flats and Xander Horvath, but they miss out on it and Xander Horvath is wide open, gets the touchdown. Great play for the Bolts right there. Next play here, we have the, oh, it looks like that kind of, that kind of sucks. Looks like some of my words got cut out. Uh, we got the first overturned interception. So down here we have, and the, the very first one, we're going to have Callahan. I think this is Bryce Callahan. And it's the scenario where it is, it was either holding or some, something like that. <clears throat> and what I want to circle here is this is Nas Adderley's interception. I, I, I don't know what Pat Mahomes is looking at at all, but the key thing I want to look at here is watch the wide receiver as he almost jumps into Bryce Callahan. And I think that's the primarily reason why it kind of first initiates the contact for Bryce Callahan is as we come up a little bit right there, he pivots and he turns his head 
and almost jumps into Bryce Callahan, which is going to initiate the contact right here. If we go just a little bit back, the start of the play here, we can just kind of watch as it occurs, not touching, and then he cuts into Bryce, and that's the first contact, and, and he throws Bryce Callahan to the ground, which, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, it's a completely terrible call, and, and to some people it may be, but the fact is we can't change anything. But Nas Adderley finishes the play out, gets his interception, gets a couple yards in return. It was a good play overall for the defense, just kind of tough situation to have there. Now this next play, and, and the worst part is it was overturned, and then there was a touchdown, and that is this play. This is just all Mahomes being incredible. Joey Bosa kind of overcommits, loses the edge there. Bad tackle on, I believe, Drew Tranquil, and then... Mahomes just uses his arm incredible. Very next play, we're going to cover Drew Tranquil again. I think this was like third and one, maybe fourth and one. And Drew Tranquil just makes an amazing read straight, takes one step to his left, goes straight down the middle right where the play is going to go and just cleans it up. Perfect. And then you have Nas Adderley jump on top, stops it. I think it was like third and one. Now, the next one here is going to be something that I touched on in my five things we learned. And I definitely noticed it after making that video, so I wish I would have noticed it before, but I was giving the running backs a little bit of a hard time. I felt like they weren't able to finish plays and all that, but the more I watched back, especially on this 22 uh, coaches kind of camera angles, is it wasn't really the running backs, it was the whole line kind of giving up here, and at this point, we still have Corey Lindsley and Trey Pipkins on the field, so it's not like this line's already beat up, and they just give Austin Eckler, in this case, no time, so you get the motion to a little bit of confusion, hike it, you give it right to, and you pause it here for Austin Eckler, and we look, there's already a wide open linebacker right here. You already have Trey Pipkins kind of losing his thing. And you also have Corey Lindsley who hasn't made contact. And as we continue, boom, we see at right here. I'm not sure exactly who this is, what number this is, because this should be your left. Oh, I don't even know. I'm not I'm not exactly sure which lineman this is that's directly in front of Austin Eckler, but he's losing. You got your linebacker right here. Trey Pipkins gave up his guy. He's coming in right here. Just you got three guys in the backfield already. You haven't even gained a yard yet. And they just completely take Austin Eckler down. He had no time for anything all game long. So that's something that I kind of noticed. I feel like it wasn't even the running back's fault. It was just the line not holding up long enough for the running backs to have an opportunity. So this next play right here, we have Mike Williams. I believe this is his first touchdown. Another big 50-50 ball. Throw, just start the play. Immediately, Herbert's already locked in that he's going to throw to Mike Williams. I mean, there, the play hasn't even developed yet. You do technically have Gerald Everett open at the top of your screen, as well as right here, right next to Gerald Everett. We, decently open man, Joshua Palmer, but he's already locked in. He's already thrown it within one second, and Mike Williams just going to go one hand grab it. Incredible play calling, and it, it works perfectly. Now, this is the overturn interception number two. This was defensive pass interference, was the call. And as we watch it, um, it's kind of obvious. Watching it right here, we got Nas Adderley and Derwin James right here. Derwin James is the one that makes the interception. But just watch Nas Adderley's head. He doesn't turn and look at it all at all. That's that's a clear defensive pass interference, no question about it. Now, the very next play is another overturn interception, the third one of the game. And this is the most controversial by far. And it only got more controversial after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. But this is Asante Samuel Jr.'s uh, interception that was then overturned to be an incomplete interception. Let's watch this play. I got a couple camera angles. Let's watch the first part of it, and then I'll give my peace of mind. And then we'll watch the kind of other angles. So as the play develops here, throw it. Just great play by Asante. Asante gets it, and it's interception on the field. Now... As things got overturned here, the rules state that for a ruling on the field to be overturned, the play must clearly be indisputably wrong. But as we saw, many players, many coaches, many fan bases didn't see that. And the fact is, for something to be undisputably wrong would mean that there's not a single person that believes that it, it was the right call and it does need to be changed. Uh, I know some people like to say, like, um, there's like a thing about a bar. F 50 people at a bar all need to say that, oh, that's the wrong call. And you're not getting that. You're probably getting the 50% of people saying that it was right and 50% saying that it was incomplete. And you can't change something in a game, especially something as important as this pick could have been 
because of it could have been. So, after all that, by the rules, it should not have been overturned. Now, if it was incomplete on the field, the ruling was incomplete on the field, and you check to see if it was a interception, you can't overturn it that way, but, you know, it you got to keep it. At least in this scenario, I think there's not enough evidence to show it. And we'll notice in these camera angles is his left hand, which by the way would be, it should be flipped. So it would be on the right, the right side of your screen. His left hand doesn't move from the football at all. When, when the ball hits the ground, which it can, it can still be a catch if the ball hits the ground. It's about the ball being jarred loose. And his left hand stays firmly on it the entirety of the time. Now, hopefully these words go away, but Gets it, catches it to the ground, and his right hand right here on the right side of your screen, if if you see my mouser, does not move at all. And there should be a couple other camera angles here that will just show it a little bit more. His left hand does not move like it moves. I should rephrase this. His hand moves, but the football doesn't come off his hand, is, is how I should be wording it. It's not the ball doesn't come ajar. His 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 right hand, right? Yes, his right hand does move off the ball completely, but his his left hand fully stays on the ball. And although his hand moves and the ball moves, it doesn't come oh, it doesn't come loose from the ball. So by rules, this should have remained an interception. And we got a lot of noise with my mic here. My apologies, but uh, just just a tough call right here. I'm not sure exactly what this this play is. I guess we're gonna play it through and see what what it is. Oh, uh, on the D-line. D-line, playing incredible all game long. Another point here, I think the reason why I like this play not so much was not only do you have three guys getting pressure on the quarterback, but all three of these guys are backups. So what you have here is you have Kenneth Murray right here in the middle at your linebacker spot. You have Kyle Van Noy on the right edge over here, right side of your screen. Chris Rump on the left side of your screen, uh, right in front of Drew Tranquil. And the um, to the right of Chris Rump, the more left of the interior D line, you have Morgan Fox. So, ball gets snapped here. You have Morgan Fox getting into him and making the break right past number 62, doing an incredible job. And at this point, you already have Kyle Vinoy bringing pressure off the right side, getting past 77. And you get Morgan Fox pushing him back. Kyle Vinoy pushes him the other way. And then you have Chris Rump here to take it. Now, sadly, you get no sack on the play, but it just does a really good job to show that. No matter who's on this field, this D-line is doing an incredible job of putting pressure on every single quarterback, no matter how good the quarterback is or how good the O-line is. They're able to get pressure no matter what. Now, the next play here, we have Joey Bosa on the right side of the screen. Uh, get a hike, and we just have immediate pressure off Bosa. Uh, some more pressure here. But what this play is, is I want, I want, to, I want to bring him back real quick. Let's look at the D-line, and then let's look at the actual play as it occurs. So, Joey Bosa brings his immediate pressure. Now, the thing I don't like so much about Bosa, although the middle of the screen you have somebody breaking in, I can't see what their number is, but Joey Bosa gives up the edge here, which allows for Mahomes to move up and around. And what this play becomes is a touchdown. We get this touchdown, J.C. Jackson gets beat by 84, but this is an overhead view of the numbers, and oh, wow, it is fuzzy. But you're going to see on the left side of your screen right here, hopefully you can see my mouse, the lefternmost of the wide receivers is going to be covered by J.C. Jackson number 27. And you're going to see number 24 in the middle of your screen right at the yellow is Nod Adderley, and he's supposed to be your safety. So what Nas Adderley was supposed to do, as mentioned by Coach Staley in the after-game press conference, is Nas Adderley actually was supposed to be the one backpedaling to cover that spot. And he did mention that J.C. Jackson was in the perfect spot for this play, and it was the fact that Nas Adderley kind of messed up here as he sticks with Kelsey in the middle of the field. So as it plays, you have Nas Adderley right here at 87, right in the middle of your screen, covers Kelsey as you have J.C. Jackson get beat on the edge here, and it leads to a touchdown. So just a little bit of miscommunication there for Nas Adderley leads to that touchdown. Now back on the offense side of things with Justin Herbert, we got Justin Herbert hiking the ball, and this play in particular is just, and I pause that, the perfect moment, the ball is just barely getting released, but as you can see, every single of the receivers, running backs, all of them are already turned looking at the quarterback, and the big reason that I want to point out here is in the second half, and in this situation, 
Joe Lombardi gets passive, and I don't want to dig on him too much because I think the players should be able to still make it work, but this is a great point. There was many of these, but I think this was one that just works pretty solidly because there were some scenarios where it's like, yeah, it was a lot of short routes, but Herbert got it out quick. This wasn't like so quick that people weren't finishing the routes. Everyone here is done with the route. At the bottom of your screen here, it looks like it's cut out a little bit. We already have a tight end looking back. Gerald Everett at the top of your screen is already looking back, sitting here in the flats. You have Sony Michelle in the middle of the field who's going to get this ball, as well as Palmer and Mike Williams, who are all already facing towards the quarterback. And not a single one of them is more than six yards downfield. And the first down's 10 yards away. So there's not a single guy that's in like middle to long range for this play and it's, it's everyone's short really close allows for no big play opportunities especially with a quarterback like Justin Herbert who can make big plays out of absolutely nothing as we saw earlier with Mike Williams it, it really saddens me to see that in the second half it's all about short down plays throwing the flats throw the middle of the field turnarounds all this stuff I, I want to see more like right here everyone is within six yards five six yards of line of scrimmage now that's something I want to see more so Right here was a Chiefs pinning the Chargers back on a punt, and it does really, really well for the Chiefs. And this is some more play calling that kind of baffles me. So as we're going to see here, first and 10 in a bad situation on your 9-yard line, and we don't run the ball a single time. Chargers don't run it a single time. Even with Austin Eckler, even with Xander Horvath, Sony Michelle, Joshua Kelly, all of these guys who we know can be very solid and at least get a couple yards for you, Chargers don't run it a single time, and what they actually do is put Herbert in a terrible situation. So on this play, we're going to run a play action to the left, and right away, we have the play action. Everyone's moving this way, and no one is blocking, I believe, number 56 right here at the bottom of your screen, right next to Joshua Kelly, and what that's going to do is allow no one to block him is um, giving no time for Justin Herbert and almost putting him in a situation where he gets sacked immediately. So right away, Herbert forced to throw it away, throws it right into the dirt, has to prevent a safety because there's no blockers, bad play calling. The very next play, you got a motion here, another play action, and once again, no one's right here blocking because everyone shifts over on this play action, and now Herbert once again is forced to kind of try to make a play as he has two guys off the edge here because you sent your tight ends one on the left side and right side of the line both bearing down on him as well as the linebacker that's covering the flats fully covering the flats and he's forced to try to get it to Garrett Everett but throws it right into the dirt once again two plays back to back where Herbert has to prevent a sack because the play calling allows for no one to block the edge because Herbert's supposed to just hope that he washes away with the play action and it's one thing to call play action and hope that it works, but it doesn't work at all. Now, this last play is, I think, the worst play calling them all. So now it's third and ten. And you hike the ball, and everyone, everyone is running just straight downfield. It's third and ten. Not a single one of these guys has turned to look, except for Gerald Everett right here. And although Gerald Everett looks like he might be open, we have the linebacker right here. But within one second... Of this and this isn't although I don't think it's great play calling this was primarily because of the offensive line here within one second Herbert's fully swarmed in the backfield just boom three guys already bearing down on him I guess two and Herbert once again has to prevent a safety for the third time in three plays has to prevent a sack or a safety and he just barely gets down the two-yard line and quick to mention here as he's about to get sacked we still don't have a single wide receiver turning to look at Herbert because the play has everyone running super deep routes, except for Gerald Everett. That's the only guy here that is even ready to catch a pass yet. So how is Herbert supposed to get the ball off when the play that you call has no one ready for a, a catch because they still have to run another 10 yards? And even after this ends, we barely have Mike Williams starting to come back on a curl route. It, it's just, or on an in route, sorry. It was just terrible play calling on, and then an entire drive, and it was three and out because of it. Now, the next play we have here, we're going to have the Chiefs back on offense, Chargers back on defense, and this is great pressure by the defense. You have Joey Bosa getting here. You have everyone, Mac, everything getting in here, and this play was just a breakdown on the backside of things. You have Kelsey getting wide open here, 
at, it looks kind of like man to man, but at the same time, I'm not sure because you have a running back down here wide open and this guy doesn't look like he's man on him. So I think this might be cover three zone. I'm not quite sure, but it looks like Drew Trank will completely lose his Kelsey right here. And we're forced to see JC Jackson try to make a play, miss a tackle. And then Derwin James has this huge WWE thing, incredible body slam. But I think the thing that bothered me most about this game, this play is right here. Derwin has him in the air and this play was blown down by contact right now. It's already blown dead which I think is way too early. Not only does it allow no time for Kelsey to try and get out of it, because, you know, there's been weirder scenarios where someone breaks out of the tackle, but within one second of that, J.C. Jackson rips the ball loose for a fumble, and Bryce Callahan recovers, and the play was already blown dead immediately. And that just, I understand that you want to keep your players safe and all that stuff, but Literally within a moment of Derwin James getting in contact with him, they already blew the play dead. I mean, it's within one second of Derwin making contact, there was already fumble, but the play was blown dead. I just, a little bit too fast of a call for me, but I do understand it. And it's it's not as terrible as some of the overturn interceptions. Now, this next one is going to be a motion here. You got Asante Sam at the bottom screen is what we want to look at. And he makes a great play, almost picks it off drops it a uh, tough scenario for him that's a late circle that uh, that's great for me now we got Herbert right here and he's just kind of forced once again to make a play happen now you're going to notice real quick once again first and 10 actually this might even be second and 10 you don't have a single wide receiver more than five yards here let, let, let's confirm this so we're at the 36 yard line let's see where the wide receivers end up when Herbert has to make a play 36 yards, so 31 is 5 yards down the field. We have DeAndre Carter as the only person more than 5 yards down the field, and he's only like 7 yards down the field. So you're not putting Herbert in a great spot where like, he's just once again forced to kind of throw it down into the flats and let your wide receivers, tight ends make a play. And although that's okay to do sometimes, Joe Lombardi needs to realize he doesn't have Drew Brees. Herbert can air this thing out, and he will pick apart coverages every single way that he can. You don't need to run constant curl routes and flat routes and quick outs nonstop for five yards because Herbert will make it work somehow. But he finds Gerald Everett here. Gerald Everett makes a great play, breaks out of a couple tackles, still gets you the first down here. And on the very next play, we're going to see Gerald Everett once again get this ball on a play action here. Gerald Everett gets open in the flats. And he does a great play, break through some more tackles, go for, I think, 26 yards. And as we kind of can all remember, Gerald Everett, right here on this very next play, is exhausted. And I think I have a, a, a clip of it, but Gerald Everett just caught a 7-yard pass, breaking through tackles, and a 26-yard pass, breaking through tackles. And what happens next is Gerald Everett requests to get a break. As you can see, he waves trying to get someone to come in, he's exhausted, and he's told he has to stand. You you see how tired he is. And because of that, because of the coaches telling him he has to stand, even though he's tired, you have a, play, a bad play that results in a pick six. Now, before we get into this play, and, and we can pick it apart pretty easy, but it's quite simple. Gerald Everett's exhausted, and because of that, he gives up a his positioning and it's a pick six. But once again, you're in a first and ten situation here, and you similar to this situation where the charge were in this spot but going the other direction you have good running backs and they don't let the running backs touch it a single time I mean right now you have Eckler in the backfield let Eckler run it once or twice you, you're within five yards of a touchdown I, I'm guaranteeing that Eckler could find a way to get in but instead you do hurry up tempo offense tell your tight end that just made two incredible plays that he has to stay on the field and you don't run the ball. Uh, again, this is play calling that is just just terrible. You gotta at least try to run the ball when you have a Pro Bowl caliber running back in Austin Eckler. And though he was having a tough game, this is a scenario where you turn to him and say, hey, let's get rolling right now. But instead, you have Gerald Everett do a little out right here. And he's in pretty solid positioning. But once again, he's exhausted, loses his positioning, pick six going the other way. And... Uh, so, to be fair, good credit right here on a couple of the guys here. You have Joshua Palmer, who almost makes a tackle. And you do have Zion Johnson, who was keeping up pretty well. But 
Again, just bad play calling. You force your guy to stay out there. You're going tempo for pretty much no reason at all, and you don't even try to run it within the five-yard line. It's just a tough situation. Now, back on offense, Herbert has the ball, and he's going to throw it right here. I, th I believe, oh, yep, Gerald Everett, once again, makes a great play, gets around some guys, gets the first down. Gerald Everett, it's not like he was terribly exhausted, and something they were going to notice at the end of the clip there was the Herbert injury. And... It, it definitely is tough. We saw him on the ground here, and I think this is the play right here. Let, let's go back real quick to analyze this play to kind of get an idea. At this point, we can see Herbert back here on the right side of the screen is already on the ground in, in, in excruciating pain. He went out of missing one play, and he would come back. And just a few plays later, just to show how incredible Justin Herbert is and why you can't be running these short routes all the time. Because he can make plays out of nothing. We look at this very next play. Third and one, I believe. And Justin Herbert is going to get the rock. He's going to make time in the pocket. He's going to run. And he's in so much pain that in this scenario where he could probably go get a first down right now, he just throws in the dirt. He needs one yard to get a first down. He just throws in dirt. That's how much pain he's in. Now, the very next play, as you can see, it's either third and one or fourth and one. The sticks are right here, right next to this Chiefs cornerback at the top of your screen. And Herbert, after not being able to run one singular yard, Justin Herbert is able to throw an absolute rope of a throw, perfect positioning, right to DeAndre Carter, straight down, almost 30, 40 yards. And this is exactly why I point out that Joe Lombardi is too passive. Because throughout pretty much the entire half, we're running these routes where everyone's stopping within five yards and before the first down. And Herbert, when he's hurt, is still able to make this type of play. That's why you can't get passive in the second half. And within, within a few plays of that occurring, he not only throws that pass, but he throws this touchdown right here. Oh, sorry. Well, quick, quick notice here. This play, pretty solid. Throws in the flats, prevents the sack. Uh, the clock didn't stop here, and the commentators mentioned this, and they pulled somebody on, and the person that was brought on that knows the rules, like, the clock 100% should have stopped there, and, you know, I know that it's only a couple seconds here and there, actually, like, more like 10 seconds, but the clock's got to stop there, give charge at least a chance to have their defense do something, but this play right here, we see, excuse me, Palmer get wide open, Herbert throws a touchdown on, oh, no, 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 hold on. I'm all messed up right now. Notice something. Right after this Austin Eckler play, notice everyone's routes. And notice Palmer's route as he cuts in. This ball is put a little bit too high, but it's all right. Now, this very next play here, we're going to have a pretty simple play. And hut, same thing. Take a look right here. Similar scenario. He tries to force it over into the flats. Eckler goes down once again. Smart move by Eckler runs it back. But this, this play right here, which is finally the touchdown to Joshua Palmer that I've been mentioning, look at everyone routes. They're extremely similar to the play that just didn't work two seconds ago. And although it does turn out for a touchdown, it's a little bit questionable that you're running a play almost exactly the same as the one you just ran when you need a touchdown right here. But it works out. Palmer runs the identical route. Gerald Everett runs the identical route out to the flats, and both of these wide receivers at the bottom of your screen run identical routes. This is literally the same play that they just failed two plays ago. But it does work out. This time, Palmer gets open, touchdown pass. It all works out, and it's just a little bit weird that they called the same play. Now, right here is the onside kick, and this is a pretty good onside kick here. Honestly, it's just a little bit of mess up for the Chargers here. It, it ends up squirting onto the Chiefs' hands, and the Chargers just can't get on it fast enough. Bounces out, and we see 33 dive on it, and he's so close, but he just can't get it. We should have a different angle here in one second. And as it as it's kicked, get a good little bounce up in the air. A little bit of confusing, bounces out, and 33 almost has it. That's a good kick for the Chargers there. They just can't quite complete it. Pretty good job for them. But... You know, that's that's everything. We went through all of the kind of major plays that that made a big turn of events. And, you know, this is the thing that's going to be happening every week. I know this video is definitely going to be a lot longer than other videos, probably closer at 30, 40 minute mark. But 
it's enjoyable to kind of cut through and go through why plays are occurring, good things that the Chargers are doing, bad things that they're doing, how to improve on that and fix that. If you enjoy this content, please give me a like and subscribe, as well as commenting down below. Um, liking is going to help me a lot, especially with this video, knowing if you guys enjoy this so that I can keep going forward with it. But as always, I hope it taught some today. Hope it made you smile. Hope it made you laugh. Something's really important to me. Affects my most today in a great way because every single day can be a great day if we all just put in the effort. And as always, you guys all be safe out there.